hey what's up guys welcome back to another remnant 2 build video today i have not one not two but three different melee builds for apocalyptic difficulty the first one of which you're seeing running in the background is my standard uh wrathbringer build i use for most of my runs it's just such a good weapon so much fun to use so strong incredibly incredibly fun to use so yeah um as with all my build videos, I'm going to be showcasing what I use, why I use it, and I'll explain for my specific circumstance why I use the things I use. And I will, as always, leave room for your customization. So feel free to customize this build. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to post in the comments uh, of what you would change in the build. Now, the second build I have is the Mirage build. I call this the spin to win build. It is such an easy build. You set up your buffs and then debuffs on the enemies and start spinning your Mirage. And that's all you do. That's pretty much it. You just spin and you just stand there. Maybe move a little bit to keep up with the enemies and uh, they will die. So this build uses a few mods and uh, mutators uh, to, to make it shine, and I'll explain why. And I also, as always, will leave some room for customization. This is a very, very, uh, you know, fun to use build as well. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's not fun. You're not really doing much, but still. Anyway, the third build is uh, using the crystal staff. Now, this solves the problem of... Uh, you know flying enemies in in the other two builds you cannot really hit flying enemies because they're flying but with this crystal staff it lets you shoot out bowls with its charge attack and you will take care of flying enemies so if you want to if you want to use just one melee build this is it uh, unfortunately i don't have the complete footage for this boss fight but the starting like it got corrupted my file but hopefully this will give you an idea of what this build is all about all right, so first up, we've got the melee build, the Wrathbringer build. This is my setup. Uh, we're using the Invoker and the Challenger archetype. Invoker, and for Invoker, we're using the Way of Killer skill um, for our active ability. The reason we use this is because it also allows you to do a little bit of crowd control if you are surrounded by enemies that are a little bit far away from you and you cannot get them in time, or maybe some flying enemies, you will do some damage to them, apply a debuff, and you know, with an invoker ability active, you have some passive benefits like increased cool, uh, cooldown, uh, uh, you know, cooldown reduction, and so, uh, so on and so forth. So it it does uh, let you uh, use your juggernaut ability quicker, which is our main skill here. Juggernaut lets you becomes uh, you become unstoppable, which you means which means you cannot be flinched. You do increased damage. You gain three stacks of bulwark which doesn't really matter in this setup but yeah you uh you move faster and uh, you do a lot more melee damage so in our setup this ability lasts 32 seconds which is great and then its cooldown is just 48 seconds and because we are using invoker we're able to use this twice before cooldown like so great setup and make sure you have uh the invoker as your primary because this lets you use your skill charges twice all right, for our character, uh, for our armor set, we're using the Leo Mark II set, the whole set. It will give you exactly 90 weight. And uh, because for our traits, we will have still medium rolls. So for our heart, we're going to be using the Profane Heart uh, with 15% health, 15% melee damage, and 15% melee attack speed. I do recommend the attack speed more than anything else, like, you know, melee crit chance or even damage reduction. I feel like the more you, faster you attack with this hammer, the more you life steal, the more you can survive. So, yeah, um, the profane heart lets you 3%, you know, your as a passive, you you get 3% life steal bonus, which is how you survive quite a bit, which uh, will make more sense in just a little bit. So let's get into our weapon setup. Our primary weapon, as, as I said, is a Wrathbringer. You get this from the DLT, the first one. It is an insane hammer. Now, the reason I use this is because it has an excellent 80% stagger modifier. So you will be staggering most regular enemies with your regular hits. And because you attack so fast, you will be constantly staggering them. They will not get a chance to attack you. The, 
even with some elites, they will not be able to move with this hammer once you keep attacking them. Right, so your primary, secondary, let, let me quickly go through them. Now for the primary, you have um, a couple of options. Now with my setup, you have, uh, I use Ring of Spears mod with the Twisting Wounds Mutator. The Ring of Spears is actually a really cool mod that scales with your melee damage. So you activate this, a ring of swords circle around you and you can just do your thing while the swords also scale off your damage they will life steal for you and they will re they will reap all the benefits of your melee increased melee damage so if you activate your juggernaut ability they will also get increased damage uh, excellent mod now in cases where you know you cannot use this mod you know if enemies are flying for instance you can always use the monolith gun with again the twisting wounds uh mutator um so if the enemies are flying you could always use this and it'll still give you a constant damage over time and it'll also life steal for you as for our secondary i use i highly recommend the nebula what you want to do is set up its mod and fire it and forget it and switch to your melee it applies corrosive damage and it'll make enemies take increased damage as well so excellent excellent mod all right, so uh, let's uh, let's start with our amulets and rings. But before I want to uh, get into the amulets, this is a key part of our build. Our build is centered around the atonement fall ring, which inflicts bleed on yourself, and it'll inc increase your critical chance by five percent. The crit chance is nice, but uh, our main goal is to inflict bleed upon ourselves for for various reasons. You'll see in just a sec. So our second ring is the hardcore metal band. Taking damage adds one stack of bulwark for 10 seconds, max 5 stacks. Because we're constantly being damaged from the bleed, as you can see, we have constant 25% increased uh, reduced damage. I mean, you have constant 5% 5 bulwark stacks. Amazing, uh, amazing ring for survivability. Then you've got... Um, You've got the Alchemy Stone Ring, which increases base lifesteal by 6% while suffering from a negative status effect. Because we're always bleeding, we are always in a constant 6% lifesteal bonus. Um, and combine that with the Profane Heart, 3 and 6, it'll, you'll be dealing, uh, you'll be, uh, you'll be having a constant 9% lifesteal effect. Next up, we've got the Brawler's Pride Ring. It increases your melee attack speed by 15%. Again. More speed, more life steal, more damage, more everything. All right, now for our amulet slot, this is where I leave, let you customize your amulet slot for your needs. I highly recommend the indignant, indignant flood, uh, fetish. Sorry, I, I botched, butched. Bleh. English is hard today. I butchered that. Anyway, uh, this amulet lets you, uh, well, it increases your damage by 20% when you take any damage any sort of damage and again we're bleeding all the time so we're taking 20 we're doing 20 percent increased damage this applies to your melee hits and it also applies to your ranged hits so in case you encounter flying enemies you will still be doing 20 percent extra damage also this reduces your incoming damage by 10 percent and it lasts 15 seconds but it is constantly up see the timer is not running out you're in a constant state of 20 percent extra damage and 10 percent reduced damage amazing amulet now if you want more melee damage you could always use something like um oh uh, let me see you could always use uh neck bone necklace which is uh reduces the damage of status effects which doesn't matter and 25 percent increased damage when suffering from a status or blight effect so you will get an extra 25 percent compared to the first amulet but you lose out on the damage reduction so you will get a 25 percent increased damage at all times because you are always bleeding um another uh good amulet to use is the matrix uh, matriarch's insignia it increases your melee damage by 35 percent again this will also apply to the ring of swords mods in case you're wondering uh, and it'll also restore 10 stamina but that doesn't really matter 35 percent increased melee damage at all times is great but again if you're facing flying enemies this is a bit of a disadvantage so yeah i'll, I'll leave the choices up to you all right, so let's move on to our traits. For our traits, we have Fortify, 
Uh, we have gifted from our invoker archetype. This increases the duration of our juggernaut. Great. Then we've got uh, regrowth. You need maxed out regrowth to counter the constant HP drain from the bleeding that you are getting. You've got strong back. Now, without this, you will do heavy rolls. So I highly, highly recommend maxing out strong back. Uh, I have Swiftness max out because in the new update, they combine two perks, the Wayfarer and Swiftness together. This is an excellent, excellent uh, movement ability. 15% movement speed and 50% traversal movement speed. Great. You are slow and clunky. You need this. I, If you want, you can remove this, but I personally cannot live without this because I'm so clunky. Uh, you need Triage for extra healing, Vigor for max more health. You need expertise for reducing your skill cooldowns. You want to use your skills as often as possible. Then you've got bar skin for damage reduction. You've got siphoner for more lifesteal. You've got 3% more lifesteal. So you've got 9% from, you know, our rings and uh, uh, relic. And then we've got 3% more from, from this perk. And then you've got the new perk, the Leech, which increases your lifesteal efficacy by 50%. Amazing perk to have. It's an excellent all-round setup for lifesteal and melee damage. All you gotta do is uh, set up your melee button with your scroll wheel and just activate, uh, you know, when you enter a boss fight. Uh, my rotation is basically uh, use this ability, set up your mods, then oops and activate your uh, abilities and then just go ham and that's it that's pretty much it you're gonna do a lot of damage and make sure you're hitting the heads you know move your camera up and down depending on your weak spot and that is it i will see you i'll do a quick jump cut and i'll explain the second build now all right, we are back with our second build. This is the spin to win build, as you saw in the showcase. So let's get started. So for our archetypes, we use the challenger as our primary and handler as our secondary. For challenger, again, no need to explain. It does a lot of passive benefits for melee users. A handler, now this is very interesting. Now, one of the concerns uh, for this build is when you do your spin to win, it takes a little bit it takes uh, like a second maybe to like get those spinnings going on right and until then you're kind of vulnerable right this is why we use handler among other benefits first of all our benefits is like you gain 30 percent increased range in melee damage just by having the handler equipped so there's that and then you've got spirit of the wolf increases your movement speed by 10 percent by having the handler equipped so we can spec out of swiftness if you want to save some points and put it elsewhere then we've got teamwork and a best friend which are nice to have now i use the guard dog because as i said there is you will take damage until you start to ramp up your spin so guard dog what it does is you can either send your dog in advance by pointing out where to go like so and they will like initiate combat before you or as a passive, the guard dog actually generates more threat than you. So in many cases, the enemies will prefer attacking the dog. And because of our traits and everything else, because of our setup, the dog will rarely die. So it is an excellent skill. And if you actually use the hold ability, uh, the companion will howl and it will reduce your damage as well as it'll generate even more threat. So I've seen the bosses go for the dog exclusively when I use this threat. So it's an excellent ability to have all right let's get on with our uh gear so for the armor you're using full leader mark ii set for a heart we're using profane heart as always uh with a 15 percent health fragment 15 percent melee damage fragment and five percent damage reduction fragment damage reduction is really important because of our ring setup um as with the first build we're using the atonement full rank this ring inflicts bleeding on yourself and it'll increase your critical chance by five percent again if you if you skip my first build i'll explain this again it inflicts you with bleed and gives you five percent critical critical chance and it combos well with other setup things as with our first build we're using the alchemist stone again six percent lifesteal bonus amazing amazing while you're bleeding 
uh, with our amulet also indignant and flesh fetish. Screw that up again. Anyway, uh, this will give you 20% uh, increased damage while you're suffering from, well, while you're taking damage, which is always, and it'll give you 10% reduce incoming damage. Because we're always beating, this buff is always active. It is not going to run out. So 20% increased damage dealt melee or ranged or any other damage dealt 20% increased damage and 10% reduced damage taken excellent buff to have for other ring we are using the bisected ring now this will give you infinite stamina but the drawback is you are getting in you are taking increased damage 15% to be precise which is fine we're stacking up on a lot of lifesteal and a lot of defensive options so you should be fine the problem with with the mirage is it hogs stamina like crazy you will not be able to use this build without this ring this is this is the most important ring for this build all right for the last lot this is up to you feel free to customize it to your liking i personally took the extra health because more health because your lifesteal is based off on your percentage. So more health means more lifesteal. So yeah, if you want more damage, you could put something. Melee attack speed doesn't really matter in this case. So um, I took off the melee attack speed as with the first build and I put melee damage. So yeah, this, this, this slot is very customizable. As with the first build, your gun slots are again, here's the thing because i'll quickly give you um a, a preview we equipping the handler gives you kinship maxed out because of kinship maxed out we are doing we are able to survive uh self-inflicted uh damage from aoe blasts and such so i thought why not why not try this we could use firestorm as our mod so my rotation is use the nebula use its mod and then use firestorm and then use your ability and then just stand stand in the tornado and do your own spin to win cyclone because of kinship you're rarely getting damage even your dog can survive everything inside the tornado this is this is an option if you want if you're not um if you're dealing with say flying enemies what you could do is you could switch to maybe the monolith uh with twisting wounds and do the same thing this will of course give you a little bit less damage but again it works out anyway so for our traits uh we're using fortify maxed out we're using kinship maxed out from the class equip we're using regrowth to counter the bleed we're using strong back for our threshold uh Remember I told you because of the dog we get 10% extra movement speed so we can skip swiftness and we can put it elsewhere. We're using triage for uh, more healing, vigor for more health. Uh, we are actually putting 8 points into spirit for our mod power generation. You want your mods back so you can cast more mods. And then we're using expertise for our skill cooldowns. We're using bar skin maxed out for more damage reduction. And then siphoner and leech you don't need to put anything else into say rugged or you know blood bond or anything like that so as with the first build same setup you've got a lot of life steal with this and a way to deal with flying enemies if should you encounter them with with these guns all right well let's uh, move on to the third build i'll do a quick jump cut all right, here we are with our third build, the one using the Crystal Staff. Now this build, uh, as I said, it lets you hit enemies from far away. I'm actually hitting the targets from here. Wow. Um, and flying enemies are not a problem. This is also an excellent build. As you can see, I'm generating shield. I've got a lot of health and uh, yeah, let's get on with it. So. For our archetype, again, uh, as with the first build, the, the setup is almost the same in all the three different builds. So I'm going to move this quickly. If you want to know more about the setup, just feel free to go across the, you know, the first two builds. Invoker and Challenger, we're going to be using the Leader Mark set as always. Profane Heart, 15% health, melee damage and damage reduction. 
the setup is slightly different here in the weapon where we use weapon and the ring so for our weapon we're using the crystal staff uh, with the shielded strike mediator what shielded strike does is each melee attack will give you a shield for 10 percent of your max health now because you have a lot of health from our build and because of those flying bolts count as melee strikes each bolt that you fire away including the one when you slam your staff in the ground and send out a ton of ton of sparks out those all of those count as shield uh, uh, melee strikes so they will all give you shields so it is very easy to constantly maintain a shield right so for our amulet we're gonna get, uh, have the difference engine so what this does is while our shield is active all damage is increased by 20 percent because it is so easy to maintain your shield it is so easy to get 20 percent constant damage increase and you do 4.5% increased lifesteal. Amazing. All right, for our rings, we have the Seal of the Empress as our first ring, increases health by 20%. Stamina doesn't matter. More health equals more lifesteal because lifesteal is based on percentage. You'll do more lifesteal. Again, second ring, Dead King's Memento, increases health by 15. More health, more lifesteal. Now, for our third and fourth slot, so I'm using a Fave Warrior Ring, which increases your melee damage by 15%, more damages. This weapon's sparks do slightly less damage compared to the last two weapons in the build, so mm, you, need, you need more damage. And for our last slot, we're using the Dying Embers, gain 6% of base melee damage dealt as lifesteal. This is a... Um, this is a free slot honestly i mean because you have a lot of shields you'll be rarely like going past the shield the damage you will you have so much shields you will rarely go into the health phase so this is where you can customize this build you can you can customize to whatever else you want here so i'll leave that up to you i use this because i'm playing on an apoc build apoc mode so it's kind of a more of a safety measure also, real quickly, again, we're using Way of Keola and Juggernaut as always with other builds. So, the traits. We have Fortified and Gifted. Fortified from, because of our armor effectiveness, you know, you need, you need more survivability. Gifted from the Invoker. Uh, again, more skill duration is always nice. You got Regrowth. And you got Strong Back. You got Swiftness. Now, because we're not using the Dog, we need more movement speed. So we have Swiftness here, we have Triage for more health, uh, sorry, more healing, Vigor for more health. Uh, we've got Expertise to reduce our skill cooldowns, Bar Skin for extra damage reduction, and Siphoner and Leech for Lifesteal and Lifesteal Efficiency. And your rotation would be almost the same as with other bosses where you slam your Way of Kula, put on your Corrosive on your enemy, Put on the uh, weapon mod and then oops i i messed that up activate your uh, challenger ability then charge your crystal staff once and then just spam your left click you will have these balls homing on you as soon as you get to 10 stacks you let out another charge attack which and then you start to charge again and then send out those bolts again so basically the rotation is slightly more demanding you have 10 seconds what does how this weapon works is when you charge a weapon by holding the melee attack you have 10 seconds to to gain stacks after you gain all 10 stacks you can charge it up and release a lot of bolts at once so that is the rotation and with this setup you'll have almost near 100 percent uptime on shields even on apoc mode so all right I know I rushed a little bit because I wanted to keep this video a little short because I've already had three builds in one. So yeah, guys, if you have any questions, uh, I might have missed some things. Uh, so feel free to ask in the comments below. Sorry if I rushed this. I just wanted to keep it short. I don't want to waste too much of your time, but I'm more than happy to answer all your questions. And as always, I do, do live streams and I do test these builds out on APOC mode on my live streams often so feel free to stop by until then please leave a like and subscribe and hope you enjoyed this video i'm going to see you next time stay safe and have fun